Good morning, everyone. Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada, for Stern Tech Workstation. has got a couple of guitars in. Now, this is a Martin guitar kit that John put together. Did an amazing job. Absolutely beautiful workmanship. He's quite a, a skilled woodworker. Uh, but, once again, like, the, like that last handmade guitar that Nick had, which was also an amazing piece, he can't tune the thing properly. It's just not stabilized as far as tuning goes. We're going to fix that. Uh, first thing we got to do is loosen that truss rod off. Uh, the Sorry. truss rod's over torqued and the neck has no relief. In fact, it's going into a slight back bow. We'll take uh, just setting up with the uh, compensated nut blank. I'm just getting this started. Bringing you in close here. This is my full ledge. Have not started any compensated nut values at this point. Don't bring each string individually down to its final depth. Go all the way across all six strings and bring them all down together a little bit at a time until, until you get them to a height where we can start working on the actual compensation value. So bring this one down. I'm not going straight through, I'm actually directing it on an angle towards its final destination. Well, it kind of went off center a little bit there, but talking and filing at the same time. I'm sure a few of you guys have already gone through a few nut blanks because you're going to go through them. So all the way across. Just so you have some numbers to go by, I've got a 16 and a 25 thou stacked. And that is 41 thou. 40 thou is a good number. Once those strings are 40 thou all the way across the distance from the underside of the string to the crown of the fret, then you can actually tune the guitar and we're going to start with the values at the bridge. Like I mentioned in that spec sheet that I made up for you guys, we're going to start with the bridge. At this point, once we've got that 40 thou height, we'll tune the guitar up, completely ignore the nut and go to the bridge. So now the process begins. Those slot depths are so deep now that the string's starting to grab. As far as putting the compensated values, I'm not touching that. I'm just going to skim off the top of that crown so the string isn't going into a deep slot and sort of grabbing. Okay, I've trimmed down that crown and then filled those slots up with some carnauba wax, like a floor wax, just so those strings don't stick as I'm tuning. So now we're back to the bridge. If you look at that spec sheet, I tell you to ignore the nut at this point and deal with the bridge. Okay, so all six open strings are in tune. So I got the right amount of torque on the neck, the truss rod's been loaded, the lay of the neck is good. So next step is we're going to play this note B and we're going to play the octave B. So. so the sixth string is nine cents sharp. This is not the nut, this is the bridge. Okay, so next step, A string. And you want to tune to that. I don't care if the open A string's in tune or not. You want to tune to that note, that fretted note, not the harmonic. Okay, now our octave. So that note is correct. We don't have to touch the A string on the saddle. It's perfectly in tune. Let's go to the D. And again, tune up to that note. A bit more. Okay, so it's four cents flat. Once again, I don't care where the open string is. This is about the fretted note. And our octave D. Five cents flat. Next string. And octave. and octave. Here's what we've got in summary. We're not talking about the nut, we're talking about the bridge saddle. The sixth string is nine cents sharp, A is perfect, four cents flat, five cents flat, five cents flat, and the high E, natural sign, it's perfect too. Some, sometimes you'll need to cut a new saddle. We may or may not do that in this instance, but we know that this needs to come back quite a ways and it looks like we may cut a new saddle. What I'm doing is I'm just putting a tick on either side of the string 
so we know exactly where we have to work. The B is 5 cents flat, so it needs to come forward. The G is also 5 cents flat, it needs to come forward. The D is 4 flat, it needs to come forward. And yet the low E is sharp. We're going to cut a cantilevered saddle. I want tons of real estate to play with when I do this job. What I've done here is I've run that pencil lead across the crown like so and that shows you uh, sort of the shape along the crown where the intonation lies right now. You can see that we can come back quite a bit on this low E and the action needs to drop down a bit anyway so I think we're going to be okay. The uh, A string is perfect where it is. The D string needs to come forward. Whether we're going to get four cents out of that or not is debatable. The G string is almost at the leading edge. It still needs to come forward. And the B string needs to come forward five cents. I'm going to try and squeak the intonation out of this saddle first. If it doesn't work, then we're going to make another saddle. So you can see when I run that across the crown again, you can see that profile has changed. So let's string it up and see how close we get with this. Let's get another read on this now that we've uh, shaped that bridge saddle. There's our B. That's good. Big improvement. A is good now too. Okay, so the D was flat. Tune to the A note. Let's try the G. Still a little bit flat. Yeah, that third string's still flat. Well, the, the second string is good now, too. And the first string is good. Okay, so this is the best reason ever why I make these up in long strips because this is what we had to do. So that just fits right in there. Beautiful press fit. I've got the original saddle. So based on what we've done so far, there's our original saddle and you can see that line across the crown tells you where the values need to be. This is the sixth string. It's coming way back. The A string was in the center of the original. It's about here. The D string was right at the leading edge, but I'm giving it a little bit more. Same with the G. The B is where it was here on the original saddle, and then our high E is here. So what we have essentially is all this extra overhang here. This can all come off, and I'm going to get rid of that first. So I'll make an elliptical cut where we basically get rid of all this stuff. And then that'll bring us in a little closer so that we can intonate this saddle perfectly. We're nowhere near the nut yet. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've transferred all those values all the way across. I did notice too that the actual crown of that saddle that was in there it wasn't quite high enough for the radius of the fingerboard. It's now a perfect match and I've left myself a little bit of extra on those two inside strings, the G and the D. So let's string it up now. Let's check those bridge values again. So this is what we got now. We've got to go eight cents back for the low E string. A string's perfect. The middle two strings were flat, but now that we've cantilevered that saddle over the slot, it's actually sharp. This is a good thing. We can work those values back. B string, same thing. It's a little sharp. It's got to go back. No issue at all. So there's our first attempt at that new compensated saddle. These are the values, so we know that this string needs to come back, no problem, lots of room for it to come back. That's staying exactly where it is. I ran that pencil over top of the crown to kind of mark the root of focal points all the way across the top of that saddle. So this one is too far, so we've got to take a little bit off here. It's got to come back. Same with the G. It needs to come back. The B is also still a little bit sharp. So it's these three strings, and then the low E needs to come back. All right, that's what we got now. I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit, put it back in, and string it up again. Now that it's kind of smoothed out, this is what we ended up with. So let's check the tuning now. Here we go, one more time. Uh, 
That's good. 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 And here was the G string that gave us the trouble right from the very beginning. It's no longer flat, perfectly in tune. Here's our second string. Okay, so that's still a little bit sharp. Okay, so that B was a little sharp. Everything else is perfect so far. Perfect. We've got one string to deal with now. Just that B, it needs to come back a little tiny bit. So this is still a little bit sharp, that B string. We've got to pull that back a little bit, and then we'll be able to get onto the compensated nut. There's our B string. Okay, now we're on to the compensated nut. But now what we're doing is we're fretting the 12th fret. Don't death grip it. Just fret it nice and natural touch and then play the open string and then mark down the value sharp that we're finding. And looks about four cents sharp. Next string, A. And I want to actually tune up to that note. And that is perfect. Next one. That one is perfect too. A little bit sharp, two cents sharp. So it's got to come back. B string. Okay, that's four cents sharp. And our high E. It's about three cents sharp. So that's what we've got now. So the low E string, we need to cut back, it's sharp. The A is good, D is good. The G we need to cut back a little bit. The B we need to take back the most. And the high E we need to take back. So let's go to our nut and have a closer. So as we just discussed, I cut back the first string, second string, third string, just a little bit. Left the A, left the D, and then cut back the low E. So let's hear how that sounds. So here's our 12th fret, fretted note. Good. And that's about two cents sharp. Let's go to the D. It is just barely sharp. I'm going to put one cent down. We're just going to breeze that really lightly. Well, that's perfect. Mm, it's pretty close. Try it again. Well, I'm going to go with a natural sign on that one too. Looks good. And that one's good. This is what we're left with now. The A's got to be cut back a little bit and the D has just, we just barely breeze that. So the final thing we're doing now is filing out the depth of those slots so that the open string and the first fret note are in tune. And then we're done. Now these are the very, these are the very final adjustments that I'm going to make on that saddle before I put that new set of strings on. So the B string is perfect. So I will go across the crown of that saddle one or two more times before I do the final values on the compensated nut. So I've rubbed that pencil across the crown of our compensated saddle and I've got my little cheat sheet there and I'm going to make those very slight alterations to the focal point all the way across. The B string is the only one that doesn't need to be touched. Here we go. This is our high E string. It's sharp by three cents. So I'm going to file that back a little bit. The G is still sharp ever so slightly by two cents. Bring that back. The D is also sharp ever so slightly. Bring that back. The A is four cents sharp, so it was actually in the center of the original saddle, so that makes sense. It does have to come back. And then the low E we need to push 
right to the very back edge of the saddle. Let's give that a try. These are the very final values now. The low E, now this is the compensated nut. Bridge is done, it's perfectly in tune. I corrected all these values. Now we've got the low E string on the nut needs to be cut back because it's four cents sharp. So we'll do that. Just using a small round file. The A was good, D was good. The third string was just a bit more than we needed, so we're going to cut that one back. That should be it. I think we're done. So at this point we ditch these brand new strings because they've been tightened and loosened so many times that they're essentially fried. So now we're ready to put that brand sparkling new set of strings on and do the final ultra tweak, if it needs anything at all, which I doubt it. It's pretty well perfect now. Here we go, moment of truth. So in the final analysis, you can see that we did need a little bit of extra help on the middle two strings to get them to intonate. The first string we just barely squeaked by. The low E string we came right to the back of the saddle. The A contacted the saddle dead center. And of course on this end, uh, almost nothing here on the low E. The A needed quite a bit of help and you could see that very early in the video. The D as well. The G we actually filed back a little bit after the initial values were cut. The B was also filed back and then just a little tiny bit of help on that high E string. Now it's time to play some chords. So of course this is always the real acid test is the uh... There's our E first position. Here's our A, first position. F. And of course D. And I've done this before on a Les Paul tuning check where you just play like a, like your typical C chord form at the 8th and 10th fret, so it's actually a G chord, and then a D chord. You hear all the overtones. Everything lines up.
So John won't have to retune his guitar depending on what chords he's playing or what keys and it doesn't matter anymore. All of these chords are in tune. That is an intonated guitar. Cheers. <laughs>